Welcome to Norton Chemistry. Today we're going to be revising alcohols. So the properties of alcohols, alcohols contain a hydroxyl group, which is an OH group. And you can have primary alcohols, which have one alkyl group attached to the carbon atom. You can have secondary alcohols, which have two alkyl groups attached to the carbon atom. And you can have tertiary alcohols, which have three alkyl groups attached to the carbon atom, which has the hydroxyl group attached. And alcohols are soluble in polar solvents because they can form hydrogen bonds with polar solvents. So, for example, water. And the greater the length of the nonpolar carbon chain, the less soluble they are because the nonpolar carbon chain is hydrophobic. So, here in this diagram, you can see that there's a hydrogen bond between the delta positive hydrogen and the lone pair on the delta negative oxygen of the water molecule. And there's also a hydrogen bond between the oxygen atom in the alcohol group and the water delta positive hydrogen atom and make sure when you're drawing hydrogen bond diagrams to label the hydrogen bond as this comes up in the mark scheme so the boiling points of alcohols the longer carbon chains have greater number of electrons and more points of surface contact meaning greater london forces so as chain length of alcohols increases the boiling point increases because the london forces require more energy to overcome they also have greater boiling points than alkanes of the same chain length because alcohols can form hydrogen bonds with each other and hydrogen bonds are the strongest intermolecular force. They're much stronger than London forces. So we need to know about some oxidation reactions of alcohols and you need to know how to write the equations. So primary alcohols can be partially oxidized to aldehydes when we distill them in the presence of acidified potassium dichromate which is H plus slash Cr2072 minus which is an oxidizing agent so you can see here that ethanol reacts with the oxidizing agent which we represent as an O in square brackets and when we distill it we form an aldehyde which has a CHO group on the end of the chain and we also form water as well as a byproduct primary alcohols can also be further oxidized to carboxylic acids when they're heated strongly under reflux in the presence of excess Certified potassium dichromate oxidizing agent. So you can see here in the equation we have two oxidizing agent and we're refluxing it to form the carboxylic acid, ethanoic acid, and water as well. We still only form one water molecule. Secondary alcohols are oxidized to ketones when heated under reflux in the presence of certified potassium dichromate. So you can see here that we have a secondary alcohol because the carbon which the alcohol group is attached to has two alcohol groups attached to it. And then we form ketone and water as well again. It's important to note that when acidified potassium dichromate, which is the oxidizing agent, reacts to oxidize the alcohol, it is itself reduced. And this means that the color of the reaction mixture or the acidified potassium dichromate goes from orange to green. Tertiary alcohols resist oxidation, so they won't be oxidized by acidified potassium dichromate. There's some other reactions of alcohols. Alcohols undergo complete combustion in a sufficient oxygen supply and they form CO2, carbon dioxide and water. So if you want to have a go at balancing this equation. When I'm balancing combustion equations, I usually focus on the carbons first, then the hydrogens, then the oxygens. So if you focus on the carbons first, that means we put a two in front of the CO2 so that we have two carbons on each side. Then for the hydrogens, we have six on the left, so we need to three in front of the water to get six on the right and then that leaves us with the oxygens and we have four in co2 and three in water so that's seven and on the left we currently have three so don't forget the oxygen in the alcohol molecule so to get to seven we need a three in front of the oxygen on the left and that gives us six plus the one in the alcohol that's seven alcohols can also undergo elimination or dehydration reactions to form an alkene and water this is done using a concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst under reflux so here you can see that ethanol goes to ethene in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid and under reflux and we also form water because the water is removed it's a dehydration reaction we can also form halo alkanes from alcohols by the mechanism of nucleophilic substitution so nucleophiles are electron pair donors and hydrogen halides are formed in situ by reaction of a sodium halide with sulfuric acid. So in situ just means within the reaction itself. So we don't add the hydrogen halide itself. So here's the equation for that reaction. So the sodium halide reacts with sulfuric acid to form the hydrogen halide and sodium sulfate. The alcohol group is then substituted by the halogen nucleophile. So here's the mechanism for the nucleophilic substitution reaction. So we're going to start with an alcohol. And in this alcohol, we're going to have a delta negative oxygen because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. And that means that the 
carbon is going to be delta positive. So we're going to have a dipole on this carbon oxygen bond. And then we're going to have a hydrogen halide. So for example, hydrogen chloride. So this hydrogen halide is going to form negative chloride ions, which have a lone pair of electrons. And the lone pair of electrons is going to attack the delta positive carbon. We're going to draw a curly arrow from the center of the lone pair of electrons to the delta positive carbon. But since this oxygen here is negative, we need to avoid this oxygen when the electrons attack the carbon. So they're going to go around the other side. And then this lone pair of electrons is going to cause the carbon oxygen bond to break. So the electrons from the bond are going to go to the oxygen atom. And we draw a curly arrow from the bond to the delta negative oxygen atom. That means we form a halalkane and hydroxide ions, which would then react with the H plus from the hydrogen chloride, which would form water. So we've got some exam questions. Both chart shows how 2-methylbutuene can be converted into a number of organic products. Complete the flowchart by drawing an organic structure in the box below. So you can see we're starting with 2 methyl butuene, which is an alkene, and reagent A is forming a product which reacts with potassium hydroxide to form a dialkyl. That likely means that we're going to have nucleophilic substitution by the potassium hydroxide to form the alcohol from a halalkane. And to get the dihalalkane, we're going to need to react the alkene with any halogen you like. So, for example, chlorine. So, we're going to form this product. This question is about alcohols. Construct an equation for the complete combustion of an unsaturated alcohol with five carbon atoms. So the alcohol is going to be pentanol and it's going to have the molecular formula C5H12O. It's going to react with oxygen, form carbon dioxide and water because this is complete combustion. So as I said before, start with the carbons, so that's five in front of the CO2, then the hydrogens, so that's six in front of the water, and then finish with the oxygens, so that's 10 oxygen in the carbon dioxide and 6 in the water, so that's 16. Minus 1 is 15 for the, for the oxygen in the alcohol. So then we need to get to 15 from the oxygen on the left. So that's 7.5, which we represent like this. Make sure you represent it like that because other ways of doing it, such as 7.5, can appear wrong on the exam stands. Many alcohols, including ethanol, are soluble in water. Explain with the aid, aid of a diagram why ethanol is soluble in water. Include relevant dipoles and lone pairs. So this is because ethanol can form hydrogen bonds with water. Let's go ahead and draw ethanol. And then this oxygen is going to be delta negative. We're going to have delta positive carbon and delta positive hydrogen. And we have a lone pair on the delta negative oxygen. And then we have water which has a delta positive hydrogen and a delta negative oxygen and a lone pair. Then we can draw our hydrogen bonds. And we need to label them. And then you can say that hydroxyl group will form hydrogen bonds with water. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out my revision video on alkenes, which should be in the bottom right hand corner now. You can also check out my website to purchase my notes and flashcards. The link will be in the description below.